bonds. Some investors are watching some key technical levels, especially on the 10-year today. Let's bring in Katie Stockton. She's founder, founder and managing partner with Fair Lead Strategies. Katie, thank you for being here. Of course. So, Katie, taking a look at your notes, you have the support level for the 10-year yield at about 1.23%. Basically, what we're seeing today, off by just a few basis points, if it falls below that significantly in the near term, what's your take on the trajectory for yields? I would actually widen out that support range to about 1.23 to 1.29%. It's based on a combination of technical factors. One very important one being the 200-day moving average, which is that lower boundary at 1.23%. The 1.29% is derived from a Fibonacci retracement level. I'm comfortable having a range as support because support is usually acting as more of a cushion or cushion rather than a precise point anyway. So it's really just how the market tends to act. Rarely do you see a very precise test of these levels. What's really important is that you see them generally hold up in that area as opposed to, you know, we don't get too caught up if we see a brief dip below that type of thing. So on a consecutive closing basis, I do want to see this range hold on the weekly bar chart of 10-year Treasury yields because that would preserve the uptrend drawn back to the August 2020 lows and suggest that we'll see a reaction to what is an intermediate term oversold reading, the first of its kind since that uptrend began. Yeah, keyword using there is intermediary. I think, uh, based on your notes, you think this fall in rates is temporary, maybe even transitory. Bill, you got to take a shot after the show. <laughs> um, but really, what is your price target? Cushion was an interesting word that you used. Do you see the rates bouncing up significantly from this support level? I do. So I think the uptrend will resume just based on that intermediate term oversold condition in yield terms. And at the same time, in the likes of TLT, which is a treasury bond ETF, we're seeing some signs of short-term upside exhaustion as that gauge tests its own 200-day moving average. So now we're seeing some signs of exhaustion on both sides, treasury bonds, treasury yields, that suggest we'll see a pretty immediate turnaround. If we don't see that, then of course that means that this correction is probably a downtrend. So we really need to see that immediate reaction. And where, of course, it becomes more convincing for folks is when you see 10-year tre Treasury yields climb back above metrics like their 50-day moving averages. Fortunately, we have technical indicators to use to try to get ahead of that kind of move. And indeed, they do suggest that they'll move higher from here. And a breakout earlier this year by 10-year Treasury yields target about 2.13% based on another Fibonacci retracement level. And in my work, that level does still seem achievable before year end. Katie, uh, Rick Santelli was telling us th that there's some chatter on the floor there in Chicago that based on some of the activity they're seeing, some of the hedging activity that's going on, that some traders anticipate that we could go on the 10 year as low as back to 1%, well below the support you're seeing right now. Is that just not on the cards for you? Well, if we don't see that immediate reaction, then certainly that next level would be sub 1%. If you look back to the secondary support, you have to go back to a previous high from 2020 to get there. It's also based on a model that they probably are using on the floor of the exchanges which is called the cloud model, very popular. And it also shows support secondarily just below that 1% gauge. So if we see immediate downside follow through and a confirmed breakdown of that 200 day moving average, then yes, perhaps that's realistic. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.